And I'm not going to take up any more of your time. So tell us about yourself right. and where we are here. And guys, come on over here. Let's get the crew here, too. Um, I am Pat Battle. I'm the director of the Mills River Educational Farm. Really, we do most of what we decide about on consensus. We talk about it. There's a whole lot of experience here. Um, Marshall has an extensive experience in conventional ag, large-scale tomato, squash, and bean production, soybeans. Um, and he's our go-to man on the spray schedule. He gets the spray schedule down, and we do spray. We spray organic, but we spray. Um, he's also totally acing the compost tea. We put tons of compost tea and put it out all the time, and Marshall is on it. And it's fun to hear him talk about it, and you will get to hear him. Uh, Jeremy here, Jeremy has, is the anchor for this farm right here. Jeremy's here every day looking at what needs to happen next on top of it spotting problems, making sure that we stay in touch with those problems, always paying attention to what's going to happen next, and a, a huge advocate and practitioner of deep mulching systems, sometimes called lasagna beds, and he um, has a lot of appreciation for that. I'm going to ask him to, to talk to you about that. Rocco really doesn't spend that much time with us here. We miss him, but he's got another farm we have over on Grandview Avenue, Grandview Farm, really creatively named. Um, Grandview Road, rather, is, and there we're doing mob grazing. You have, what, 150 now heirloom turkeys? Um, what breed are they? Standard bronze. Standard bronze. Um, he's breeding um, buckeyes, buckeyes uh, has pigs, and sheep, right? Uh, they're on the way. Sheep on the way. Yeah. On the way. So he'll, he could talk about that, but I heard this is vegetables. We can't go into animals. We personally think they should you be totally can't connected. Touch on here. Okay. <laughs> we have some animal people here. Well, and to us, I mean, I spent years being a vegetarian, not because I didn't like meat, but because I worked in a slaughterhouse. And then I realized as a farmer that they're part of the fertility system. If you really want sustainable fertility, you have to have an animal component. And so that, for us, our dream, we have a four acre plot next to the animal farm is to have that be in row crops and successions, long successions of row crops, um, vegetables, and pasture, and hay. And just do deep successions and really build the fertility. You know, we're deep, very sold. Rocco, could, with a lot of excitement, I'm sure, talk about the work that Greg Judy has done with us. I don't know if people know who Greg Judy is, but he's a, an expert on mob grazing. But instead, since we're here on vegetables, Rocco will also give you a quick um, discussion of some of our weeding techniques, stale bedding and flaming and stuff like that. Um, we're hoping Juan will make it. Juan has been acing our compost operation. We make a lot of compost. We use it sparingly, but we have a lot of uses for it. We make our own compost for compost tea. We use compost in planting mixes. We use light applications of compost on top of cover crops. We do extensive cover cropping. Um, this time of year, not as much because we are, we're maxed out on space, but as our tomatoes and peppers and stuff stretch, we'll be sowing cover crops underneath them. You know, we're just trying to keep cover crops going all the time. Would that we had time to do your little slideshow PowerPoint too, we could show you. I'd say our cover crops are pretty glorious this time, wouldn't you? Um, pretty outrageous. And um, we're as proud of the cover crops as we are of the crops. They're, they're as important to us. Um, we're probably gonna start off the tour with looking at um, number three. Uh, we're very creative in our names. That's number three. This is number two, and the first covered greenhouse is number one. Yeah. Um, and so we'll look at number three and talk about what's going on in there. Um, we've all had it. Je Jeremy's been pretty lead on the on the planting in there. Um, Marsh has really worked on the spraying. You're going to see a lot of white stuff on things, and we really want much more. We use surround. People know what surround is. Oh, Tim, I, just, I was looking for you. Yeah, there I'm, you go. There you are. Pardon me, folks. I thought you were, I was wondering where Tim was. Um, Tim is new to our crew and comes with a great passion for preserving food. 
Mm -hmm. I have a jar of your beets there for him to try, by the way. By the way, those are spectacular. Thank you. I really enjoyed them. Um, and his passion is to preserve the food. And he's learning the growing. And um, probably you should just talk about the learning curve, too, you know? Um, because what's he is the objective our, of the farm and uh, the overall money program? Uh, our objective <laughs> is not money, actually. We're a nonprofit. Um, we did a year of going to market and did a great job, had a really full, nice, you know, very pr to be proud of um, booth, you know, and Rocco came up really fast. He, you know, had been here, he, he had interned on farms before that, but this was his first year as a farmer. Because he had me as a resource, I wasn't working there, but he could call me up anytime and ask questions. He had a one glorious packed booth. He had tons of variety all summer, you know. But our nonprofit looked at it and said, you know, what, we're, what we really want to do is get people to understand the importance of sustainability and make sure that people are ready for what we're all pretty convinced is coming, which is going to be some dislocations as energy becomes more scarce and the effects of climate change and stuff come. We're going to have to be creative to deal with the changes that are coming. And um, that is more the goal. And they just saw us as like when we were selling at the market, we weren't out in the farm working. So they basically said, we, don't, we want to donate the food to the hungry. We can afford to do that. So we donate the food to the hungry. Um, we all eat very well ourselves. Um, and our main mission is education. That's why the name is Mills River Educational Farm. And we have, we have workshops monthly. We'll probably have more specialized speakers coming in, you know, other people besides myself. This is probably the first one. We're bringing Mark Schoen back. Some of you may know him down from Virginia. Mark, I think Richard and Jean probably agree, we is really, <laughs> really spectacular on cover crops, dynamic cover cropping, understanding whole systems. And if, if you want somebody to go over a soil test with you and talk about how to use organic amendments, I couldn't think of anybody better than Mark. And that's what he's going to do here. It's going to be a five-hour session. We have a wood-fired oven. We're going to serve pizza from the garden. Um, if you could possibly stick around, I encourage you to stick around for it. It's going to be spectacular. We're also bringing John Nilsson in. He's a compost person that, who works with us, compost expert, and he will speak about interpreting waste analysis reports and using waste analysis reports to figure out how to make good compost. Mm -hmm. And then once you've made good compost, how to tell if it's good and then how to use it. So that's just this workshop. We got one coming up with Dr. Richard McDonald and myself in July about beneficial insects and the habitat. You'll see that our garden is heavily um, planted to flowers too. There's a diversity of flowers. I wish there were many more, but because of our mulching systems and the fact that we're trying to grow food too, there can't be as many as I'd like to have. But we always want a great diversity to have that balance that gives us stability. And we'll teach on that. We'll scout, we'll go out, we'll actually have people find bugs and identify them, learn how to tell from damage, see the different stages of the insects, look at the plants, look at the interactions. That's the July workshop in August. And then I'll stop, I won't give you the whole thing, but. I'm just so proud of these three. They're really like major ones. Um, Ron Morris, Dr. Ron Morris from Virginia Tech, who's, um, uh, was, his career was in conventional no-till, and he's retired kind of emeritus into organic low-till, and he's developed his own equipment. He's worked with Mark on the cover crops. He's really got a dynamic, synergistic cover crop. And his technique is to start a cover crop in, in the early, early fall or even late summer, turn it in the first time he gets a chance in late winter, early spring, and put a second cover crop on that, and then use that as a, no, a low till, kill, to plant into. And he's having to use virtually no supplemental nitrogen. And he's not doing, he's real, he's got on his radar that that's a huge fault for a lot of organic growers is they don't pay enough attention to nitrogen and don't get maximum yields. But he's figured out how to get those maximum yields almost exclusively. And I guess he gives oftentimes one feeding one fish, um, fish seaweed um, injection, but that's it for his nitrogen. And the rest of it's coming from his cover crops. And he's going to come down and talk about all that and about the synergy of that with um, a, a, a charcoal product he's worked with. And just about synergy in general, that if you use dynamic cover cropping and then use microbially rich amendments, whether they be worm castings or biochar or compost, he's actually made equipment to lay compost out in a row. He's got equipment to lay compost down, put plastic over, lay tape down on top of um, high residue fields. Wow. Yeah. What was the name, the gentleman's name? Um, Ron Morse. Um, 
and indeed, you know, we're going to have me talking about that equipment too, because it, it's so important that we have equipment to scale. You know, there's a big gap between the tiller, the tiller technique, and then large-scale fields. And so we're trying, we're trying to work on that too to figure out what equipment can we use, how do we do that. You know? um, and that's 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 what we're doing. We're doing that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's major. And indeed, what I love too is it's already happening that um, people just drop by. You know, farmers that are trying to figure stuff out and stuff just drop by. And it's never like, okay, we don't have time for you. It's always like, tell you all we know. We might keep working, but we'll share everything we got. We have no secrets. We want them to know everything we know. Mm. Um, and so it's a, it's a whole lot of fun. We're really enjoying it. Um, let's head on over. Oh, any questions? Tell them livingwebfarms.org and they can hear Ron Morris or any of that stuff. Yes, right. Not only that, and all. your cards. <laughs> right, remember to bring nice. them. Yeah. Um, this is uh, our card for livingwebfarms.org. That's our website. And it's, we, on, it's on the agendas, too. The link is on your agendas. Okay, so if you don't want an extra card, pass them back. But yeah. you're welcome to it. Um, the, the website is a great resource. We link to articles. <laughs> We link to um, other websites like Dr. Richard McDonald's. Um, we, ha we have the beginning of um, videoed um, classes that we've already taught. So our, all the classes we teach will eventually be on the website. And we do a weekly radio show where people can call in and ask questions. And we try to get interesting guests on and stuff like that too. Um, yes? Since y'all are non-profit and you donate the food, what what is the overhead on the farm? The non-profit. Yeah. Um, you know, and I got to tell you that all of us who have been growers and gone to market and stuff, that's a little hard for us. Market's important to us, you know, that community, that sense of, of you know, it really sets the agenda when you got to get to market. Um, you know, the hungry don't come and, and, you know, tell us that we're in trouble or not pay us. So, you know, we still get paid. So it's just, it, it, it's, hard, it's a hard adaptation to do that. I think all of us kind of miss market at some level and like that part. But we get that the nonprofit has another agenda, and I'm sure all of us are incredibly grateful to be working here. We have um, a huge opportunity to have an impact. Um, we get great support, um, and we eat real well. Do you sell at, do you sell at Bill Gate Markets? At we don't. We have, and the nonprofit has decided that it doesn't want us to spend our time at that. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, instead we donate it to the hungry. Um, and you know, we still plant like we sell at market, though, you know. <laughs> right. yeah. Example, we have a whole bunch of sun gold tomatoes in the greenhouse. And this year I'm going, you know, those things go crazy. They get really stressed because they go, they're so incredibly productive. And we got to spend so much time picking them. And yeah, I mean, wow. it's great that the hungry get to have this incredible treat. If you haven't had sun gold, I washed some for you to try. Um, but maybe it's not the best thing to grow. You know, <laughs> maybe we should grow more paste tomatoes, more. Um, big tomatoes that are easier to harvest, you know. Um, but that's it's a transition. We are, we're still getting to accept that we don't grow for market because we all have been have grown for some kind of market. You know, that's all that's been our experience, and and it's basically what growers do. So we're adapting to that as we as we as we move along. So do you have donors, uh, I guess long-term donors, or giving you year to year, or you individual donors just through online? We, we, well, we do um, have stores? the ability to take donations, but it's largely one nonprofit. Okay. One nonprofit that got a vision, got inspired, you know. And the Organic Grower School, as Jean probably told you about the Organic Grower School, um, the Organic Grower School was the inspiration for that. You know, I mean, they were actually having their fall event, the True Nature Fair, just down the road. And I realized, hey, we can have classes here. Mm. And when I spoke to the nonprofit about it, they just were totally thrilled. And I said, you know, you can do this all the time, and they just jumped on it. They, they just jumped all over it um, and did a, a huge shift to doing this. It's kind of a new thing. We've been doing it since 2008, and we became a nonprofit last year. And before that, we were just getting ready to do it. Mm. So, um, we're, we have a whole lot of plans. Yeah. Keep an eye on us, you know. We're going to do some stuff. <laughs> okay. Show us what you got, Pat. Let's go yeah. look. 